Hi, this is Rob Packard from Medical Device Academy, and this is a short video explaining what you get when you purchase our usability procedure, SYS48. Here, let me share my screen. I'll show you the different templates. So this first is the procedure, SYS48. It's grown a lot over time. Uh, I think it started out as about a seven page procedure and now we're up to 18 pages. We've added a lot of references to this document from IEC 62304-1. That's the international standard for um, usability requirements. And it would be typically what you would follow if you were complying with uh, CE marking requirements for medical devices. And then we also have um, requirements for the usability uh, guidance document the FDA has published. Um, so that's included in here. And then we've got templates for your um, usability summative protocol, um, your usability test report, and a use-related risk analysis. Um, we've been following FDA feedback on usability studies and the deficiencies that they identified during their review of a 510K submission. And one of the things that we identified that they're specifically looking for is a use-related risk analysis or URRA. A lot of companies have a risk analysis, but they don't specifically have a document identified for use-related risks. Usually it's incorporated with their regular risk documentation, which is perfectly acceptable. But if you wanna separate it out, and if you're looking for what detail they want in that use-related risk analysis, we've provided a template for that and reference the actual deficiency as an example at the end of this as an appendix. So that might be helpful to you. Um, here we show the procedures that are inputs, including your test plan. And then we have your outputs, including the uh, templates, the summative protocol, the use-related use risk analysis, and the usability report. Throughout this, anywhere we have yellow highlighting that's indicating uh, a person that has activities to do. We provide some documentation and examples um, and commentary here in green. And then we also have some sections that are highlighted in a, in a bright blue color like this, referencing other documents that would be applicable, whether it's a procedure or it's a form or a template. So we have um, this section of the procedure is the step-by-step -step how to perform the usability testing. Um, we have the human factors process steps, preparing use specification, um, identifying user interface characteristics, identifying hazards and hazardous situations, identifying and describing the hazards related to each use scenario, um, selecting hazards related to the scenarios for summative evaluation, establishing a user interface specification, establishing a user interface evaluation plan. And as I said, all these are requirements we added to be more compliant with the IEC 62366 if you're C marking. And then the um, how to perform the interface design and implementation for formative informative evaluations. This would be during your development phase. Performing a summative evaluation, that would be during your verification and validation phase. And then the um, a section de dedicated to user interface of unknown providence. This would be for legacy systems. We have monitoring and measuring of this procedure, which be typically through auditing of the process. But we also have here uh, a comment about the Appendix A, which is an example of deficiencies provided by the FDA on fights and case submissions. We have a training and retraining section, risk management for this procedure to make sure it's more consistent. And we've added the new additional templates as records here. So we have the use related risk analysis in the two possible templates that you might use and the other particular um, records here as well. It keeps on going. And then on the last page, we have our example that we provide. And that's actually a copy and paste right from a deficiency with uh, confidential details scrubbed out from that submission. So I'll close that. Here's an example of the protocol itself. Um, let's see how many pages we have. With This is a nine page protocol. So it doesn't have the specifics to your device or your product. So you have to add that in here. 
but it's an outline. So you have all the required sections of a template. Uh, let's see, what else do we have here? We have the uh, human factors and usability report that you would publish after you've finished your usability study. This is what should be in the actual report. So conclusion, description, description of the devices, summary of known problems. This would be from existing MOD databases or other post-market surveillance activities, hazards, uh, preliminary analysis and evaluations, categories of critical tasks, and then the human factors evaluation. So this would be the report you'd submit to the FDA after you're all done, but they often want to see a copy of the protocol that we reviewed previously. And then the last thing that the FDA also wants to see is this, the URRA or use related risk analysis. And we provided a template for that. So types of use related risks, post-market surveillance data, and here's the actual format uh, so we've actually got it as a table there that you could duplicate and add rows to, or you can put it in an Excel spreadsheet. And we talk a little bit about the scoring here. So that's the end of what you get when you purchase this procedure. Uh, so I'll stop sharing here. So if you have any questions related to our usability procedure or the templates, how to fill them in, please don't hesitate to contact me. My information's on, on the website on the Contact Us page, and you can use our Calendly link on that page to schedule any meetings with me. Um, I also include a, a link to Matthew Walker's email, who is one of the co-authors of that procedure and did all the updates to IEC 62366. I hope that was helpful to you and uh, look forward to hearing from you soon regarding your usability study. Bye-bye.